Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh To carry on with the upper limb lectures, I'm going to cover in this presentation the anatomy of the scapular region. I'm Dr. Dadia Saleh, professor and the head of anatomy department at Mansoura University, Egypt. The objectives of my presentation are First, we will revise some body features and then we will talk about the muscles of the shoulder and scapular region. They include the deltoid, the subscapularis, the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the teres minor, and the teres major muscles. Let's first revise the different regions of the upper limb. We have here the deltoid region, the pectoral region, between them lies the deltopectoral groove, the arm, between the arm and the side of the chest we have the axilla, we have the cubital fossa in front of the elbow, then the forearm, the carpal region or the wrist region, the palm of the hand, and finally the digits. This is a superior view of the left clavicle. This is its anterior surface, posterior surface, medial end, and lateral end. So this line will represent the anterior surface of the lateral third of the clavicle. This is the posterior surface of the left scapula, a chromial process. The spinal crest, the supraspinous and the infraspinous fossae, and this is the lateral border of the scapula. If we look at its anterior surface, we can see the subscapular fossa. This would be the suprascapular notch. This is the anterior surface of the left humerus. This projection on the lateral surface is the deltoid tuberosity, the lesser tuberosity, the greater tuberosity. Between them lies the intertubercular groove. If you look at the humerus from above, this is the head of the humerus. And you can also see the lesser tuberosity and the greater tuberosity with three impressions, the superior, the middle, and the inferior impressions, which lie over the greater tuberosity. For the shoulder muscles, the deltoid, the subscapularis, the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the teres minor, and the teres major muscles. The middle four are also called the rotator cuff muscles because they rotate around the shoulder joint like a cuff. These muscles get their origin from the pectoral girdle, either the clavicle or the scapula, and they are inserted into the humerus. Deltoid muscle is triangular in shape. That's why it gets its name, because delta means triangular in shape, and oid means looks like. The deltoid muscle gives the rounded shape of the shoulder. However, if it is paralyzed due to injury of its nervous supply, this will lead to flattening of the shoulder. It takes origin from the following points. Its anterior fibers from the anterior surface of the lateral third of the clavicle. Its posterior fibers, they call it the rear deltoid, arises from the lower border of the spinal crest while the middle deltoid or the middle fibers of the deltoid from the lateral border of the acromial process. The three fibers, the anterior, middle, and posterior, insert at the deltoid tuberosity of the humerus. For the action of the deltoid muscle, the anterior fibers will flex and medially rotate the arm, as in shoulder press. The posterior fibers or the rear deltoid will extend and laterally rotate the arm. This is quite the opposite of the anterior fibers. While the middle fibers will abduct the arm from 15 to 90 degrees. 
teres major muscle it takes its origin from the lower third of the posterior surface of the lateral border of the scapula and it inserts into the medial lip of the intertubercular groove of the humerus it helps the latissimus dorsi in its action so it will lead to adduction extension and medial rotation of the arm again as if you are folding your arms behind your back then the four rotator cuff muscles here we are looking to the scapula and the humerus from the front and here we are looking to the scapula and the humerus from the back these muscles take origin from the scapula and insert into the greater or lesser tuberosity of the humerus they provide stability of the shoulder joint because of their close proximity to it and they also rotate the head of the humerus around its center this is lateral rotation and this is inner rotation the subscapularis muscle is one of the rotator cuff muscles it takes origin from the subscapular fossa of the scapula and inserts into the lesser tuberosity of the humerus while the supraspinatus takes origin from the supraspinous fossa of the scapula and inserts into the upper impression over the greater tuberosity of the humerus while the infraspinatus takes origin from the infraspinous fossa and inserts at the middle impression over the greater tuberosity of the humerus finally the teres minor takes origin from the upper two thirds of the lateral border of the scapula and inserts at the lower impression at the greater tuberosity of the humerus the nerve supply of these muscles the supraspinatus and infraspinatus from the suprascapular nerve which is a branch of the upper trunk of the brachial plexus while the deltoid and the teres minor muscles takes nerve supply from the axillary nerve branch from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus finally the subscapularis and teres major muscles by the upper and lower subscapular nerves again these are branches from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus between these muscles lie some spaces we call them the intermuscular spaces we need to know the boundaries of these spaces and their contents in this picture we can see the scapula and the humerus and the muscles attached between them so this is the teres minor muscle the teres major muscle the surgical neck of the humerus and here is the long head of triceps muscle so now we can see three spaces we call them the intermuscular spaces the quadrangular space the upper triangular space and the lower triangular space the quadrangular space will lie between the teres minor teres major humerus and long head of triceps while the upper triangular space will lie between the teres minor teres major and long head of triceps and finally the lower triangular space lies between the teres major and the long and lateral heads of the triceps so the quadrangular space transmits the axillary nerve and the posterior circumflex humeral artery while the upper triangular space transmits the circumflex scapular artery and finally the lower triangular space transmits the radial nerve and the profunda brachii artery this will be the end of my presentation thanks for listening if you like it please do not forget to subscribe like and share and do not forget to hit the notification bell so you can know if i upload another video and please feel free to leave a comment below. See you in the next video.